So yes, as you think about lead by example is how are you leading your team? How are you being there side by side with them? But it's also how are you as a leader preparing yourself, preparing your heart so that you can pour out into them? Hi PCC, I hope that you're doing so well today and I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Elizabeth and in our last leadership moment, we talked a little bit about um, a leader's role um, in communication during a crisis. And I hope that you found some of those tips that we talked about helpful and you were able to implement some of those uh, tips into your organization. In this week's leadership moment, I really wanted to give a shout out first to moms as they are leading the way and they're molding and shaping the leaders of the future. So moms, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. You're doing an amazing work. I want to share a few leadership lessons that I learned from my mom. And some of these lessons uh, weren't lessons that we necessarily sat down and mom said, learn this. These lessons I learned by observing my mom as she poured her heart into her family, her community, into her church. There were lessons that have really impacted and shaped the way that I lead and the reason as to why I do the things that I do. My very first lesson that I learned was that of adaptability. You know, in 1 Corinthians 9, 19 and 22, Paul is talking a little bit about how he's become all things for all men. To the slave, he became a slave. To the weak, he became weak. And he talks about the why behind he did those things. And the why is, is because he really wanted to win someone. And for him, it was even important to just win one someone. So Paul had really tapped in to the importance for a leader of being adaptable to becoming what your team needed you to be. You know, my mom and I were very similar. Uh, one would even say we were very stubborn and strong-willed. Um, and so at times that created some friction between my mom and I. You know, growing up uh, at, through elementary school into middle school, mom had expectations and they were very high expectations. But they, she had the same expectations for me that she had of my brother, even though we were two very different people. And that created a lot of tension for us. And it wasn't until later on in my high school years that my mom really started to adapt and change the way that she approached me. She started to lean into my gifts and my talents, into my heart and my strengths. And that really helped to change the trajectory of our relationship. It really helped to um, bring respect on, but for both of us to each other. You know, it took some time for my mom to get there. It wasn't like an overnight thing where my mom was like, okay, we're gonna try something new. There was a lot of trial and error, but she understood similar to Paul that she needed to adapt, that she needed to become what I needed from her in order to reach me and to win me. And once she did that, she tapped into my heart and our relationship grew and our love and respect for one another grew. And it really changed the way that we viewed one another. It wasn't easy, it wasn't overnight, but she was willing to adapt and give it a try. So what are the things that are preventing you as a leader from adapting? What are the roadblocks that you have of becoming what your team needs from you? Is, are you having a hard time connecting with that person maybe that needs a lot of support from you? How can you adapt and become what they need so that you can reach that person? So I'm gonna challenge you today is, are you agile in adapting and what is preventing you from adapting? Lesson number two that I learned from mom was generosity. 
One could say that uh, mom was irrationally generous with her time and her talents and her resources. It was never a question of would we, it was a question of why have we waited so long? You know, my mom really uh, lived by Proverbs 11:25. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched and one who waters will himself be watered. My mother really understood that. She really understood that as she poured into others, she herself would be experiencing blessings upon blessings that she wouldn't have had she not been generous with her time. You know, we went to a very small Spanish-speaking church all of my uh, childhood life, and I remember distinctly my mom spending time with the people in our community as she translated forms, as she attended parent-teacher conferences, as she supported uh, people in the hospital, as she translated, as she supported them in a way that she could. She did that by giving her time to them and her talents of being able to speak the language that so many of them could not. As we grew older as kids, we became the translators, whether we wanted to or not. Uh, but it was something that instilled in me that we needed to give of ourselves to others, the things that God had given us and give them so freely. The other thing that my mom gave uh, very regularly was of her resources. I distinctly have a very strong memory of uh, Christmas time. You know, throughout the year, my mom would spend her money. She would uh, put the change into a change jar. And at the end of the year, we would spend a day putting the coins together in the rolls, going to the bank and getting that money. And instead of using that money on herself or her family, my mom would use that money to buy gifts for the children of our community. Um, some of these gifts that they received would probably be the only gift that they would get that Christmas. But my mom went to the toy store and bought each child a gift all of their own. She said, this gift is for this child and this gift is for this child. And she did so with such a joyful heart. And it was awesome to see the kids receive their gift on that um, Sunday before Christmas with such smiles on their faces, and to know that my mom, all year, that had been her heart. How much money could she collect so that they could have something to open for Christmas? That was irrational generosity. You know, there were times when growing up, my dad sometimes, you know, did not have a job or maybe was working a lot less and one would think that when dad would bring home the check to mom, mom would say, okay, what bills need to be paid? What, what groceries need to be purchased? But the first thing mom would do when she would get the check from dad was to write out the tithe check and to give to the church what needed to be given because that, was what, that is what was on her heart, to give irrationally even when we had little. My mother really understood that bringing blessings to others, watering others, that she herself would be blessed in a big, big way. So when you think about yourself as a leader, where can you give of your gifts, your talents, your resources? How can you lean in to your team and give them what they need. Do, need. do they need your time? Do they need to be coached and mentored? Do they need you to spend some time with them on that spreadsheet or on that report? What do they need from you to be successful? It isn't always money. It isn't always money. But how are you being irrationally generous in your leadership towards your team, towards your family, towards your organization? Lesson number three that I learned from mom was lead by example. And before you click off and check out of the video, 
Um, I know we've all heard it before. We need to lead by example. We need to work side by side with our team. We need to be the first ones in, last ones out. Um, and yes to all of those things. Check off all of those boxes as a leader. But the lead by example that I want to share with you that I learned from mom was of being prepared. You know, every morning that mom woke up, before she spoke to anyone, before she did absolutely anything, she spent her time in prayer and reading her Bible and singing to the birds outside of her kitchen window. It was a, t a special time that she spent with God preparing her mind, her heart, to be ready for the things that were to come that day. And it was so amazing to see that consistency of my mom. My mom knew that as a leader, that during that day, she was gonna be pouring into other people. She was gonna be giving of herself as a leader, that there were gonna be pressures and pulling and tugging of her and, and people were going to need her. And she knew that the only way that she could pour into others if she herself was ready to take on the day. And how did she ready herself? By leaning in to being prepared with the armor of God, by leaning in to the fruit of the spirit. You know, there were mornings that I remember distinctly seeing my mom and she would be praying and there would be tears just coming down her face. I can only imagine what she was praying for because her prayers were silent. She wasn't doing it as a show but it was a reminder that she had this huge faith, this huge faith that the God of gods was listening to her and that was leaning in and that was preparing her for the day. So yes, as you think about lead by example is how are you leading your team? How are you being there side by side with them? But it's also how are you as a leader preparing yourself, preparing your heart so that you can pour out into them. If your cup is empty, how, how are you going to be able to fill their cup with knowledge and time and resources? How are you going to be able to adapt if your cup is empty? So as a leader, we need to lead by example, and that starts by being prepared. Well, Possible Community Church, those are the three of many lessons that I learned from my mom. Three lessons that have impacted my leadership in a big way. It's adapting, it's being generous, and it's leading by example by being prepared. I want to thank you for your time today. I want to thank you for being here. And I hope that there was something that you took away for your leadership. I also want to say again to moms, happy Mother's Day as you continue to shape the leaders of the future. Before you go, I want to remind you to connect with us, subscribe to our YouTube channel, our um, Instagram page, our Facebook page, continue to connect with us as we're really enjoying um, serving up amazing content that will meet the needs of your heart. Also, come back on Sunday. We have got a great worship service, and we want to worship with you. So Sunday at 9 and 11 on our YouTube channel, please join us. And lastly, I want to remind you to give. All of the services at Paulsville Community Church are made possible because of generous givers as you. Pop on over to our um, website, click on the link, and give. Give as God um, asks you to give. Thank you so much for your time today, Possible Community Church. I hope that you have a great day and we'll see you again next week.